Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor, your go to show for your best bets ahead of the weekend. And on this week's show, we're going to be previewing contests at Sandown and Chester, as well as a special anti post preview ahead of the Irish Champion Stakes. And we're we'll looking at all of these races in the usual company. You know the score by now, as do the lads, Declan Ricks and Sam Boswell. Sam, how's your week been? Very good. I must commend you, though, Kate. Deck and me have had it easy. You've driven through the night after being at the Racing League on Thursday at Newcastle. Fair play. That's proper graft. I'm slightly delirious and the voice is slightly taking a hit. But it was great to be there and it was great to speak to so many people who were fans of the show as well. So, yeah, Deck, we've got the fans out there. <laughs> really? <laughs> Kate's got Don't the fans. Yeah, Kate, Kate's got the fans, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, who says you're on the gravy train? Absolute <laughs> grafter as Air Kate Tracy. So, uh, yeah, you'll, I think you'll sleep well tonight, though. <laughs> well, I'm delighted with this opening sequence because it's all just been basically complimenting me. So, thanks, guys. I'll come to you for that. Uh, looking forward. They're obviously just feeling sorry for me at this stage on the back of two hours sleep. But we will press on with the show. Less of that now. But before we get on with the previews, a reminder to please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction anyway. And also a reminder to like and subscribe to the At The Races YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Right on with the action. And we begin at Sandown with the Atalanta Stakes. This comes up at 2.25, a Group 3 contest for the three odds and over, over one mile. A pretty open Atalanta this year, Dex. So what's the bet? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. It is a, uh, an open race. I think just in terms of raw ability, there's not an awful lot between the main players here. I think they all kind of operate around the, the 104, 105 kind of range in terms of uh, official ratings and, and ability. Um, I just thought actually uh, a stiff mile, a tactical probably run race would suit Cop Ice best out of uh, all of these. Um, like she was a brilliant winner of the Sandringham at, at Royal Ascot. The race did fall apart around her badly three out. You know, I thought she was in front way too soon, but I loved how she kept going. Very professional, beating a, a nice horse in Breeze there. And, and a, the Aidan O'Brien filly back and forth thing, unless as, as really Frank the form. Then she was deemed good enough to step up to Group 1 company in the Falmouth. I thought that was just clearly too, too big of a jump for her in a race that was run well on, uh, on rain-affected ground. Uh, I thought she acquitted herself quite well, though. Maybe Frankie had the revs up going uh, to three out. And then the race developed away from her. She she was quite wide off the track before weakening. Look, I don't think she's a group one filly, but this is a big step down in class. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Hop Ice will take a, a hell of a lot of beating here. Now, we we're going to have the challenge of how many different pronunciations we could get of this filly's name. And not to give much away, but <laughs> Sam, you're in agreement. But how are you pronouncing her name first and foremost? I'll go with copies. There we go. <laughs> let's, let's just change it up, shall we, to try and give some, some <laughs> difference. Um, no, Dex completely right. And I think he's made a really good case for her. I think the Falmouth run, you go back through that, random harvest in behinds, obviously come out and won. And she's probably not that top, top level. But here, she, she looks a cut above these to me. And mm. I kind of, the more I look through the race, I know there's a lot in the race, but I don't know if there's a lot I'd want to make a strong case for. Um, I, I thought Richard Farhi's horse, that York win, the listed win, was OK, but I didn't love the form of that. So if I, I don't like her, I can't like Queen For You, who was behind that day. Uh, Pop to Pova, fans of this show will know how much I like that horse, but her season just has been one issue after another. She, it's great to see her back after having a, a heart issue earlier on in the season, but I don't want to be taking 13-2 to two about a yard that have had a quite enough time, albeit with winner recently, but I can't see her in this field. I, I thought Roman Miss was interesting at a double-figure price, kind of runs, runs a fairly decent race, but I, I, there was nothing to get excited about apart from the favourite for me, and I, I thought Hedera as well at 9-2, to two. so it was a match between the pair. I went for the slightly more unexposed angle, I think she'll be too good here. She does need to get a good start, though. A couple of her, her previous starts, she's dwelt a little bit. So I hope Kieran Schumacher is bang out the gates with her just to make sure that issue doesn't doesn't hamper her. Yeah, I think it's interesting you raise. I think she's been better recently at the start of the season. And I think on her debut at Kempton, she definitely was kind of slow away. But I think in that regard, a bit like our own friend uh, Shaquille. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's been getting the hang of it. So we'll see next yeah. week uh, or the week after if Shaquille can do the same. I know. We like we like siding with slow starters. Don't yeah. We just love a bit of trepidation throughout <laughs> the race. But again, we're all in agreement, though. Ooh. We're going with, yeah. we're siding with the hat trick. Capice, Capice. 
spice, whatever we're calling it, coppice I'm going to go for, yep, as well here. And you've not really left me much to cover, to be honest with you. But when I initially looked at this race, I was between her and Heredia. But I can't ignore the fact that she's getting the £5 from Heredia. When you're getting that for the three-year-old allowance at this time of year, I mean, it's just massive. And like I say, when we're talking about a class dropper in comparison to a class riser with Heredia, I'd rather be siding with the class dropper. And I don't think she was disgraced in the foul of whatsoever. Deck, you made the point where she had to challenge away from the main action. She was hanging there as well. She got worked up beforehand. She still did enough wrong. So I think that was a massive learning curve for her. Her form stacks up, as you've both been saying throughout. So hopefully then this drop down in grade, we'll see Coppice back to winning effect. So no need for selections because it's a total roundup. We are all with Coppice in our opener. So we'll know our fate pretty early on on Saturday. Do let us know your own selections in the comments section below. As we move on to our second race again at Sandown, though, this is the Solario Stakes, another Group 3 contest. This comes up at 3.38 for the two-year-olds over seven furlongs. Now, this race has been won by the likes of Too Darn Hot, Massar and Kingman in recent years. So, Sam, will we have a star from it this year? Well, let's hope so. Small field, but there's some interesting contenders. And I I'm well aware Godolphin are not having the season of all seasons, especially Charlie Appleby, but... Alban for me is a really interesting contender. Uh, the debut win over seven at Newmarket, he justified a very short price that day. Um, but it was done in a, in a nice enough style. I appreciate sometimes that July course form, you've got to be a bit careful with it. You know, but went off something like four to seven and really impressed. And I took a deep dive through the numbers just to have a little bit of a look at trying to get a better understanding. And I must say his two-year-olds still operating at around a 28% strike rate. For the last five years, that's been, I think, around 33%. The drop-off hasn't been with those these emerging talents. Maybe it's because we're going to see more of them throughout the season. But the firepower they've got, they're not going to have a bad run forever. I think they're going to have some emerging talent come through here. And as we've mentioned, this race has been won by some lovely types in the past. Definitely can see this horse putting best foot forward and starting to turn the corner, hopefully, for the boys in blue. Yeah, the Charlie Appleby form has been well touched upon this season, hasn't it? But like I say, you just with it, with the level and the calibre of horses that they have, you'd expect it to turn at some point. This might just be the way then and a good price about that horse as well for Sam. Deck, are you in agreement again? No, I'm not in agreement. Um, I'm going to be I'm with Mortlake uh, for a couple of reasons. I think um, he's got a really interesting profile. Uh, son of Churchill, he, he was very well backed in the morning of his day. Mm. Um, I think 28s into 11s, if I remember correctly, but he was just too green, as green as Kate's jumper there. <laughs> I'm going to end off Kevin Blake after last night's racing league. Jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Uh, just too green to do himself justice. Didn't have a clue. He was looked after. I think Reese cluttered what rode him. Uh, but next time out, again, the money came from, I think, 28s into 7s this time. And he just looked a completely different horse at Leicester. Got out of the gates well, into stride well, showed some nice early pace uh, and made the running. Now, he did have a bit of pace pressure on, but he had not a bother to him. It, he didn't get in uh, into a bad rhythm. Um, you know, it didn't break his confidence, anything like that. But I just loved he changed his legs, changed his cadence and just quickened up and went away. There was a real relentless look to him and he just looks like a, a nice horse. Uh, it's interesting, Sam's selection, Auburn, Um he beat a horse of Rafe Beckett's on debut mm. at, uh, at Newmarket but a horse called Whiskey Pete. But Whiskey Pete wasn't put in the Royal Lodge or the Dewhurst, which are obviously early closing races. But Mortlake was, which suggests to me they, they have, they'll have a good handle on the Godolphin horse. Now, whether or not they can beat the Stout horse, that's another, uh, another matter. But I think he will get an easy lead again. I don't see a lot of pace. I think Ross Ryan will be able to dictate his own fractions. Uh, and that was kind of the other reason why I liked him for uh, a yard and Rafe Beckett, who are just on fire at the moment. Had an unbelievable weekend last Saturday. So, yeah, um, it's going to be hopefully... Uh, Mortlake for me here, please. And we've got more agreement because, again, I'm with Mortlake here. It's just going to seem like I'm completely copying and pasting <laughs> what you're both saying and that I've done no prep, but I swear that Mortlake was my selection here as well. And it's interesting that you say he's by Churchill. Now, the thing that I have always sided with with Churchill's is always expecting them to be better on their second start, much like Churchill himself. He was beaten on his first start before winning his second, and it's always a trend I've tried to note then going forwards with Churchill's second outing, 
Mortlake definitely showed that where, like I say, he was a big enough price on his debut. It's just far too green to do himself justice. That was over the seven furlongs. Okay, seven furlongs again last time out. The quicker of those two novices as well. And that was actually the new juvenile record that he managed to bring up with that success too. No, it was rattling ground there as we know, but yeah. even so, the form looks solid. I'm expecting the ground to be quick again at Sandown where they've had a dry enough week, a little bit of rain around there this morning. Morning, but the forecast is mainly dry and it was good to firm ground um, in the going description. So hopefully he'll get the quick ground again and I'm expecting him to be able to make up into a group level performer. So Mortlake for the pair of us too, Sam. All bad for me. I feel a bit lonely here. Oh, good. Yeah, about time that we had a bit of disagreement on this show. Again, do let us know your own selections for the race in the comments section below as we move up to Chester for our next previews. And we begin with the Chester Stakes. This comes up at 3.20, a listed contest for the three-year-olds and over, over a mile six furlongs. Now, we have some talented types in here, Deck. Military order, though, is a hot order at the head of the market. The subject of sustained support, but who do you fancy? Yeah, look, I suppose that the, definitely the story and the betting story of the race is, is definitely military order. Um, I think the vibes about them are clearly good. They, I think the Appleby Yard must have, they, they feel they've got him in a good um, spot at the moment because they, he's at the start of the week, he was well backed for the ledger. Now, I don't know if that's because people just saw the entry here and were hoping to maybe grab a, a little bit of value because he was some fancy prices, 33 and up but whatever the reason was he's been significantly cut for the ledger so uh, it'll be interesting to see him back here but I don't know I just think four to five is a little bit short you know Sam's already made the, the case and the numbers about the Appleby horses kind of on the three-year-olds and olders um, he hasn't run since the uh, since the derby either although we saw Sir Michael Stout and his team brought back passenger last week at Windsor to win straight from the derby I just think even if the Appleby yard were firing like uh, on fire I think I'd still be happy to, to back against him at four to five. He's also got a penalty to carry, so we should remember that. So, kind of having gone through the race, I thought Divine Jewel was was overpriced. She, she was quite interesting. Now, you've, uh, it's worth going on at the races.com and looking at her run last time out at Claire Fontaine in France. That was over 12 furlongs, maybe a little bit of a, a tactical run race. That didn't suit her because she's, you know, she really stays 14 furlongs well. Uh, she was hampered early in the straight as well, and I think the short straight there probably didn't suit. Her. Now, you can argue again whether Chester is the kind of track that's going to suit her as well. But I hope with Thanks Monica going forward, uh, with Lone Eagle as well, and maybe Military Order being put in the race, uh, if there's a good gallop on here, I, I think it'll suit her because she does travel well. I just thought she was kind of the classic value bet against a favourite in Military Order. Now, look, he could go and absolutely bolt up. I think uh, the form maybe suggests that and the price suggests that. But it's just I, I don't want to get involved with a, a Charlie Appleby horse on the back of a, a preparation like he's had at that kind of price. I'm going with the value play in Divine Jewel. Yeah, every horse has its price, doesn't it? And everyone then has their opinion on what price uh, they would want to be siding with the horse. I'm fine with four to five, to be honest with <laughs> you. Sorry, Sam, to interject there, but I'm going to bat this back across the deck. So I'm with military order here. He should be winning this. I'm not surprised that people are, are piling into his price, though, because uh, I know that we have the doubts about the Charlie Appleby form, admittedly. But like I say, military order should just be far too good for these. There are questions all over the place in this listed race so it's a, it is a bit of a minefield but he's the classiest proven performer still plenty more to offer hopefully obviously the significant question that he has to answer is that derby run from last time out but going into the derby he was highly progressive winning three on the bounce including a novice under a penalty in impressive style before taking the Lingfield Derby trial on the all weather, which led understandably so to a tilt at the Derby itself. Made sense given the form he'd shown, a brother to the 2021 Derby winner, Adair. Now, he just did not handle the hill at Epsom whatsoever there. And it was all against him. He was beaten a long way out. He's better than that. He's had a freshen up. I'm not concerned about him coming to Chester either, where people might make comparisons between Epsom and Chester. The way he handled the turns at Lingfield, I'm not, I'm not put off by that one little bit. The only thing I am always slightly suspicious of is that much of a class drop into listed races is always something that I'm slightly suspicious of, but I'm hoping it's just a confidence booster to bigger things. And the other thing as well, if they are targeting the legend or the ledger, should I say, could this be like, you know, just a tune up for yeah. that? Yeah. Because the, the ledger's only two weeks away. He can't 
of a hard race here and expect to go and win a, a classic. Yeah, exactly. And if he doesn't win this, and he definitely can't be going off yeah. and winning a classic. So at least I'll know where they stand. So yeah. military order then for me. But Sam, who are you siding with? Well, Kate, just really quickly give a market update. We put four to five on the screen because the graphic was made the night before. I'll be honest with you, we don't see too many moves like this. He's already four to seven now with ourselves. And I'm Let not even to blame. I've been sat here with my hands up. Plenty of people are in agreement with you. Um, I just, at four to five, I was tentative a bit like Declan about getting involved. At four to seven, I will steer clear. He was my pick for the derby as well. So mm. uh, I've got to kind of just let, let him run. And if he wins, he wins. So for me, I was going to try and find something to run against him. I just thought Lone Eagle was a very solid yardstick. Rafe Beckett's won this race for the last two years running, albeit with horses of slightly different profiles, actually. They're a bit younger, but... He arrives here having had to compete at the, the very top level against some really brilliant stayers. Um, if you go back through his form at Chester early on the season, he was just beaten by Hamish in a Group 3, and that's kind of probably the expectation of where he should be winning his races, that kind of level. Uh, I don't think there was any disgrace in that defeat from a, from a good horse who's obviously gone on since and managed to, uh, to, to frank the form as such. And I just think he's a really interesting runner here against a horse that... As we've alluded to, you wouldn't. Per I personally wouldn't think he's bomb-proof. Mm. The Derby run, yes, he didn't handle the track, but just generally the profile of the stables, older horses. I know I'm obviously siding with their two-year-olds earlier on in the day, but I just have a bit of a concern with him. So, Lone Eagle would only be a small bet for me, but I just thought he was curious. He's now about seven to two as well. If he gets any bigger, I think he's an absolute cracking price in a small field. Yeah, and he handles Chester. Yes, which is which is definitely notable. So dismissing the older Appleby horses, siding with the younger <laughs> ones. Right, well, at least we all disagree, finally. Yeah, I, I really cannot wait for Thanks Monica to ball top now. I know, yeah. One of the few horses we haven't <laughs> mentioned. Wonderful. Well, if you have sided with her or any of the other horses, do let us know, because it gives us a, a, even more variety then for that contest up at Chester as we move on to our next race. Again, up at Chester, this is the 3.55 at Phillies Condition Stakes. Again, for the two-year-old over six furlongs a trappy little contest here where Jabara likely to head the betting but Sam what is the betting angle for you yeah I think we must have upset the producer for him to put this contest in yep. it certainly looked <laughs> difficult um, we haven't got the price on the screen but Great Generation is about a five six to one shot as we record this and I was really taken by the debut now once race in comparison to a lot of these in here that have got a lot more experience um, but the win at Haydock the second and the winner just absolutely they were about four lengths clear of anything in behind and they were strung out and i suppose at haydock sometimes we are used to seeing that but i was really taken with it still ran a bit green that day as well and i just think marco botti's horse for me ticked plenty of boxes um i suppose it's the exciting unexposed angle in comparison to those that have been tried at a decent level and maybe coming back down i thought the favorite interesting dropping back down in trip was curious um I wouldn't say it's put me off, but just I thought at the prices, I wanted to try and find a bit of value. And, and Marco Botti's horse just ticked a few of those boxes for me. Got a good draw as well. Yeah, exactly, which, as we know, counts for so, so much. So, Deck, who are you siding with? Uh, Where I are you drawn? I am also with uh, a good great man, generation. That, yeah, so Sam hasn't left me much meat on the bones <laughs> there. Uh, one thing I would say is 20s into 8s on debut. I mm. think the Botti yard clearly knew they had an above-average filly and they backed her. The other thing as well, which we want to see here, she was incredibly green and slow away, um, but she got into stride all right. She ducked a little bit left. I suppose it's better her ducking left here at Chester, going left-handed than, than on a right-handed track. But I just thought, the way she travelled through her race, she looked like a really smart filly. Um, there was plenty of juice in the ground that day, so I'm hoping um, uh, the, the kind of good to soft ground at Chester won't be uh, of any inconvenience to her. There's plenty of um, stamina as well on the distaff side of her pedigree, so a well-run race, I think, with Eleanor Dashwood going forward, that will suit her as well. I, I was just, I was really taken by her, and I, I hope she's a nice horse for Marco Botti mm. because he's been one of the trainers in, in the UK who has definitely suffered from the talent drain to other yeah. jurisdictions. He's lost quite an, uh, quite a good few nice horses over the last four or five years. Uh, also, maybe shouldn't forget he trained Acceleration before that horse moved to, to Bally Doyle. So it'd be nice to see Marco Botti and uh, uh, Stefano Cerchi team up here for uh, a good winner so I can just do my Italian gesture <laughs> after when we're going to collect the docket. 
<laughs> well, I really hope to see that. I hope that someone will be there to clip this up. And it almost makes me actually want your horse to win. But uh, not enough, though, for me to still side with Great Generation all the same. Because I was interested to see how the betting was going to shape here. Because, of course, I respect the, well, the likely favourite, Jabara. But I, between those in behind, I wasn't entirely sure which way it was going to go. But I feel that works of art will be well found in the market. It's all been a bit too chummy on this show. So, again, I'm going to disagree here. <laughs> going to have to side with works of art who again is just another one where we don't know how good she will be only a twice race filly running in the colors of the king and queen and i talked about the churchill offspring earlier on improving from their davy well the other horses that tend to improve massively from their davy bolding juveniles they just show so much more on their second start that's exactly what this filly showed from her davy to her second start after only sixth of 10 at 33 to 1 on her debut now she did catch the eye on that davy admittedly she went back to the same course and distance last time out really well back sent off as the odds on favorite and she won well and what looked a good filly's novice as well at that time between the first three home at least now she's assisted to the group two winning juvenile tactical so she should be up to this grade on that basis really i just hope that the ground doesn't dry up too much for her i think she may have just been kept to the all weather because of the pedigree that she probably wants a bit of give in the ground so i'm hoping for rattling conditions at sandown i'm hoping for a bit of juice in the ground at Chester. So again, weather watch on this show as we're coming the full, full circle yet again. Then I'm hoping for different parts of the country to be giving me different weather. So that is for me, works of art. But Sam. Great generation for and the Italian job for Deck and me. <laughs> right, well, I hope that we that won't win anyone. Never have to see that ever again. As Well, do let us know your own selections, of course, in the comment section below as we move over to the Skypad to give you our best bets of the weekend as well as looking ahead to the Irish Champion Stakes. Now we're only eight days away from the Irish Champion Stakes, one of the highlights of the summer, and we have a really intriguing lineup. Hopefully, going to post in this year's renewal. But Sam, what is the play for you at this stage? Yeah, tricky market. Five to four, King of Steel favourite, Augusta Road in at fours, and then it's much bigger. Everything else, and you kind of we always have to play this game when we preview these races of yeah. what's going to run. And one I feel really confident in picking as an anti-post selection for that, not just alone, but is Luxembourg for Aidan O'Brien. Um, the winner of the race last year, 12 months ago, that came on soft ground. And I think it was probably on paper a weaker renewal, I think, mm -hmm. than we're going to get this time around. I think we're still going to get, that was only seven runners, I think, that day. I think we'll still get eight or more, which is which will be good for each way on the day. But I do think there's some value to be found with this horse. We're 8-1, to one, which I think is a joint top price I've seen out there at the moment. I'd have liked double figures, but his quality's there for everyone to show. And you, you flick back through his season so far, reappeared at the Curra, needed that, then won, won the Tattersall's Gold Cup, then just behind Mostaf in all right, four lengths. But he's then gone on to the King George and finished fourth in what I think it's fair to say was one of the warmest King Georges we've seen for a long time. I'll be incredibly disappointed if he's not in the frame here. I think he's an absolute great bet each way at 8-1. to one, And I, I'm really excited to see what he can do. I think he's a class horse. And I suspect this has probably been the target for a while. Yeah, and I like the fact when we're looking at Antipos, the first point you made there of what horses are actually going to run. Well, surely this has to have been the target then for him. So a good way to play the race that might just cut up deck. But where were you looking? Yeah, it could cut up. Um, and again, you you know, in an anti-post bet, you've got to pick a horse yeah. who would hopefully run in the race. Uh, my selection is Onesto. He is on target for the race. Um, he was second in the race last year, but uh, I thought he was probably the moral winner on the day, if I'm being honest. Look, I don't really like to, to knock jockeys, but Stefan Pasquier, to be fair to Stefan, he's not an easy horse. He mm. did kind of over-travel in parts, but he just got a little bit too far out of his ground in too many races last year. And then last uh, in the Champion Stakes last season, he made this big, big mid-race move and it, like, it must have cost the horse a significant amount of energy and to, to be only just touched off by Luxembourg, uh, who raced wider, you know, coming wide at Leopardstown on that track there is usually a, a positive as well. I just thought he was the moral winner of the day. Um, being kept fresh this season, I thought he ran a cracker over a mile in the pre Jacques Lamarwa behind Inspire Shape, like he was in really good order there. He's never suggested he'd be a miler, but he showed some great pace, looked in good form, moving well. Step back up to 10 furlongs at a track where he's maybe run his career best, I think is going to suit. So, yeah, coming here fresh, course and distance form, and I think maybe Christian Dumour is going to ride him instead of Stefan Pasquier. So, uh, lots of positives there. So, not a negative jockey switch then, in your opinion, at all for no. Ernesto. Now, 
Now, you've both made cases for horses, again, likely to go here. Now, a horse that I'm hoping is going to go here, but the current price that he's available at, top price with Bet Victor, as we've just checked at the time of recording, 66 to 1. I'm going with Spreewell here, who's just been totally dismissed on the back of what have just been an unfortunate run last time out. Well, two unfortunate runs in a row. Now, of course, I respect King of Seal. He's the one to beat in here. August Rodan has a significant question to have to answer. Should he go? Mossadass not likely to turn up here. Alf Layla has to be supplemented. So I'm trying to look of those horses away from the head of a market further down. And Spreewell is the one for me, where he was an impressive winner of the Group 3 Derby trial at Leopardstown over this track and trip. And he ran really well, given the adversity that he faced in the Derby. Went forth. He didn't get a clear run three first furlongs out, stopped at a crucial stage, didn't look at home on the undulations. Ten furlongs, I think, is his best trip, but he tried the Irish Derby last time out, hampered badly four furlongs out by that horrible incident, of course, of San Antonio. So he's been hugely unlucky, is now a big price here, back in a track and trip, he's posted his career best at. For all that, I'll say he does want cut in the ground now, long to long range forecast, again, weather coming into it, that they predicted a bit of rain then at Leopard Sound this weekend, a dry forecast next week before the long range forecast says it's going to rain on the Saturday of the race <laughs> who knows if that will come to fruition but I would want a bit of cut in the ground for Spreewell but at 66 to 1 top price bet Victor that will be good enough for me ahead of the Irish Champion Stakes for Group 1 contest where we'll be looking ahead more so to that race on next week's show of course but we must give you our best bets for this weekend so deck you're up Yes, the nap this week is going to be a horse we've already discussed. It's going to be a great generation uh, at Chester for the Marco Botti team. Really loved what she did at uh, Haydock, despite uh, re being really slow and green and destroyed. She just travelled for fun that day and looked like a really nice horse. I uh, loved how the first two home were pulling clear of the third as well at the line. And the money, I think she was backed from 20s into 8s, suggested that the Marco Botti team knew they had an above average filly on their hands. So hopefully, great generation can... Uh, go in for the nap this week. The next best is going to be Lord Proctor at Sandown. Are you even doing British horse racing right if you're not backing Rafe Beckett horses at the moment? <laughs> this guy loves Sandown. He's two for three at the <laughs> track. Uh, I still think he's well handicapped to win with some of his form earlier in the season working out nicely. I love his, uh, his gait speed and the way he breaks. He always puts himself into a good position. He'll make Ross Ryan's life a hell of a lot easier and uh, he'll be in a good tactical posse in the race. I just hope they go a nice even pace because he does stay well this horse and then the long shot I struggled a little bit with a long shot this week but I'm going to go to the 410 at stand at Sandown in extraordinaire uh, she's trained by Brian Mean now Brian Mean horses first time out two year olds generally take a massive step forward but I thought this filly showed a little bit uh, in a Newbury maiden first time out she was uh, there wasn't much of a pace on and she was outpaced and then she got hampered and she lost her position but I loved how she was running on at the end I think the stiff nature of Sandown seven furlong track will really suit her as she's bred to get maybe even a mile at two so yeah she's a horse I hope will take a big step forward with O'Shean Murphy in the plate so yeah those are this week's three losers oh well, great well I like the optimism <laughs> with it you know I actually led up a horse called Lord Protector to win at Sandown who was a staying hurdler back in the day oh, nice. so it's always a weird little bit of yeah whenever I hear that horse's name back again especially then when it comes to Sandown but anyway that was a long time time ago though Sam <laughs> your own best bets please yeah it's a really competitive weekend of racing let's hope we can find someone who's come on deck be more confident especially because <laughs> my next best we're going to fight over the Rafe Beckett <laughs> fan club chairmanship I think at cool, the moment cool. the nap's going to be copy so we've spoken about her she's obviously a very talented horse and I think she'll put a, a field which I think whilst there's a lot of them I don't think has the strength in depth uh, classical song is the horse I'm talking about from Rafe Beckett's yard at 410 um, second on debut and it was a very expensive purchase Ryan Moore booked to ride there's an awful awful lot to like about their chances uh, the long shot now this is a bit of a curious one I did struggle a bit like deck actually this week to find a long shot so I've gone down the Tom Marcond and uh, William Haggis route in the 150. Uh, this horse has dropped a couple of pounds. Interesting, I think they stay at seven rather than go back down to six. And uh, I just think the visor stays on. And, and the run at Newbury suggested there was still a race in this horse for all 
ended up 7th of 11, which doesn't sound on the face of it great. Just weakened out at the end there, down to a mark of 82. I'm prepared to go once more to the well and back that each way at 12 to 1. You'll probably get an extra place or two. Yeah, extra places and on offer. Make sure to utilise that. Now I'm in agreement with you, and we're all jumping on a very similar bandwagon. Capis is also, or Coppis, goodness me, I can't even <laughs> get the pronunciation of this filly's name right now. But Capiso is also the nap for me because of all of the reasons that we've already reiterated. Hopefully to get back to winning ways on this dropping grade from the Group 1 Falmouth last time out. This should suit her much better at Group 3 level, getting the £5 from Heredia, which is a big ask for the four-year-old to give weight to the three-year-old, and it looks a good opportunity for her to get back to winning ways. My next best is going to be Works of Art in the 3.55 at Chester, the Phillies condition stakes. I am just concerned about Jabara giving the weight away here to plenty of unexposed rivals, and I'm hoping one of those unexposed rivals rivals with plenty more to offer is works of art mates her turf debut was a good winner of a kempton novice last time out that form looks solid i just hope that the ground stays on the easier side for her as judged on her pedigree i think that that will be what she wants and i'm expecting plenty more to come from her and my long shot is going to be dear old wonderful and the <laughs> super consistent and in the three o'clock at sandown the 10 furlong handicap where he has been dismissed in the market somewhat uh, for this, but he's a he was a course and distance winner this time last year off of a mark of 80. He was back-to-back -back course and distance wins he managed to bring up in 2020. And again, that was at this time of year. This time of year is the time to catch him at this track and trip as well. Now, of course, he is much higher in the weights off of a mark of 93 here, but that's a warranted ri rise in the weights. And of course, he didn't run his race last time out, but he was flat. It was too bad to be true in a Shergar Cup contest. So I'm expecting him to hopefully bounce back at his favorite track and trip so they are our best bets for the weekend and that's everything from us on this week's show a big thank you to deck and to sam for all of their hard work as per usual big thank you to you for watching we'll be back at the same time next week where we'll be previewing irish champions weekend as well as a little bit of arc trials day on sky sports racing